Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to give you an overview of Lightroom CC from retouching the photography all the way to exporting your photos. I think that 2019 is a perfect time for you to become a successful photographer. And I want to help you on this channel by teaching you post-processing and getting it the best possible in camera. And mastering Lightroom CC is completely part of the equation. I find that Lightroom CC is amazing when you are studying as a photographer because it is very fast, it's very easy to use. You will see we can get amazing results in minutes. All right, so I'm gonna start with this. This is an SD card and I've prepared some photo onto it. I put it into my Mac right here and we're gonna import it. So right now that's how Lightroom CC look. It says this album is empty. I'm gonna click here on add photos or I could go here to file and add photos, same thing. I'm gonna go directly on the SD card that's called Paris and click review for import. You can see all the photos are here and they're selected by default. It says add 13 photos. But you also have a, an option here called add to album and it says it says Paris 2019. That is something I created before but I could just create a new album and call it uh, Paris 2019 2 uh, if I wanted to and create. So that's going to put the photos into your album. Now you may be asking where is my photo going to when I put them into Lightroom CC? Well the idea is that they are going to go to the cloud because this works, of course, with a subscription. You can have the details of the subscription in the link of this video. But the idea is that the photos goes to a special cache memory and straight into the cloud. The advantage is that you have them on your Lightroom mobile, on your Alpine mobile, on your desktop, and even on a website called Lightroom Online. The downside is like me, it's a problem because I already had 200,000 photos on the hard drive with a very specific structure. So for me, I use more Lightroom Classic. But if you can start with Lightroom CC, it's pretty good. And I think the future anyway is going to be Lightroom CC. But let's say you don't want, I mean, you want to have a backup of your photo. You don't want to have everything up in the cloud. Well, let me show you. You can go here to Lightroom Preference and you see local storage. You can click here on local storage. It says here, store a copy of all original at a specific location. You can click on that and, and browse where you want them to be. I didn't do that because I love the idea of having it in the cloud. It's fine. And you can see exactly here uh, also where you are. I got one terabyte of uh, total cloud storage and I've used 34 gigs and I've got 990 gigs left, which is quite a lot of raw files. And again, check out the link below to get all the prices. You can get as much gigs as you want or as much terabytes as you want. All right, so the photo now are in Lightroom CC and they are ready to be retouched. So let me show you just really quick the interface. This is to uh, basically add photos, which we already have. This is to see all the different albums that you have and ways to find your photos. So, so you can see I have like two hours ago or I can go to uh, a Big Sur and I've got like a whole bunch of like different albums which are going to be on all my device and that's pretty cool. Right now the album, remember we put this into Paris Photo 2019 too and here is all the photos is there. So basically you have to organize in terms of album. That's the way these things work. Of course you can also find your photos per, uh, you know, per date here. You can go by date or you can go by people and it's going to do a whole face recognition. But I like to work with albums. Now, of course, if you want to have like a structure, like, you know, a folder with different albums, you can. And for this, you have to create like a folder. So I can create a folder called, for example, uh, Paris. Okay. And in that folder, I could, you know, drag and drop my Paris 2009. So you can go here. So you just have to hold it there. Voila. And up, I'm going to put it into my Paris folder. Okay. And then I could... Uh, let me see here if I have any other Paris related photos. Oh, I'm going to take my Paris cinema and same thing. I'm going to drag it here and boom and put it in the Paris folder. So you see now I got a folder and I've got two albums in my folder. So you can organize yourself that way. And that's what I totally recommend. Okay, so now let's retouch some of the photos. So I'm here in the Paris 2019 too. And I'm going to start with this photo. This is a photo of, that I shot of the Eiffel Tower for the 130 year anniversary with an amazing light show. And so when you're ready to retouch, all you have to do is click here and you got all the basics retouching of Lightroom. Everything is almost there. It's amazing. Now on this one, I'm going to lower the highlights, open the shadows. I like to do that. And then I like to you know, set my black point and my white point. 
Once I've done that, maybe I want to change the temperature, add a little bit of magenta because I'm a magenta addict. Maybe add a bit of vibrant. Vibrant adds saturation, which is really cool. Uh, you can go into the color mixer, but this is not an advanced tutorial on Lightroom CC. I'm going to do some really basic retouching here. And I can do different effects like texture. Uh, texture is, by the way, a new slider that's for Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. And what it does, it really brings out the texture or it um, blurs out the texture. In this one, I want to really make the Eiffel Tower pop so I can move the texture to the right. I really like what texture does because it sort of adds some kind of clarity and sharpening, but it does it in a, in a different way than sharpening and clarity. I don't know how to explain otherwise. So you just have to check it with your photos. Maybe add a bit of clarity on this one. I never add clarity when there's clouds. I don't like what it does on clouds, but when there's no clouds like this one is good. Uh, I think on this one, I want to maybe add a little bit of vignette. So I'm going to move this to the right because I love vignettes, especially when there's no clouds. And maybe, you know, let's add a bit of sharpening. I have this rule when I should add 100 ISO, I put about 90 of sharpening and 10 of noise reduction. And chromatic aberration, yes, I can turn it that on. And voila, I did the basic retouching. If you want to see the before and after, you can click on the three dots here and you can see show original or you can press the backslash key. So I'm going to do that backslash key, boom, before, after, before, after. Now, the show was changing all the time and I've got four other different photos with the exact same settings. That's why I love to shoot manual because what I can do on one photo, I just put it on everything else. All you have to do is press Command Shift C uh, to take into account all that we've been doing so far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes, I didn't use any of the tools, which I will introduce a bit later, so I'm gonna say copy. And then I'm gonna select all the other photos and I'm, I'm gonna press Command Shift V and not Command V. Command V will only do one photo, Command Shift V will do all the photos, boom. You see, paste static settings to four photos. So now I've got all these beautiful photos from this 130 years anniversary of the Eiffel Tower completely retouch. Okay, now let's make a panorama, guys. So this is a panorama I did in the Louvre. I'm gonna select all these photos and I'm gonna right click, photo merge, panorama. That is so cool that we can now do panoramas in Lightroom CC. And you've got different projection mode, spherical, uh, cylindrical, it's basically different ways the panorama is gonna to stitch together. And I tried when it comes to architecture, I try to use perspective as much as possible because perspective usually gives me like a cleaner approach and a cleaner result. Although it looks kind of weird at first, usually it gives a better result at the end. Now boundary wrap is an option. If I move it to the right, what it's gonna do is gonna to try to uh, move the photo in a way that uh, is gonna take care of all this white. I don't wanna do it too much because Sometimes what it does, it, it makes the building go a little bit crazy. So I use it just a little bit here and I'm gonna press merge and that's gonna merge all the photo into one panorama. And then it's gonna stack them up with all the original photos. You'll see it's really cool. So here is the panorama and you see here it says six. If I click on this, I come to a special place where I can see the different uh, you know, steps, the five photos that makes the panorama and this is the final result. Let's retouch this panorama. So let's crop it first. I'm gonna take the crop tool. I think I wanna crop this, this. Yeah, I don't want, yeah, something like that. I kind of like that. Press enter and then let's do some retouching. Let's open up the shadows. Let's do the white. I can, you can also hold on the option key. I like to do that when I do the black point to make sure you see what you see here in yellow and red and blue is basically pure black. I like to have about, I want to say one or 2%, uh, maybe not that much. And then the whites, you want to make sure you don't have too much like this. Uh, so I'm still holding the option key here. Uh, you want to just add the threshold. Okay, I like that. I don't like the colors too much. I think it needs a lot of magenta. Yes, now it looks great. Now, I want to talk to you about the local tools, which is probably the most powerful feature of Lightroom. Starting with the gradient tool. Amazing. The way it works, you click and drag and you basically can make a gradient and anything you do there is going to be applied on the gradient from that first line all the way to that last line. So for example, on this one, I can double click if I don't like something there or I can just maybe add a bit of, uh, yeah, maybe a bit of blue, a bit of magenta. I can lower the exposure, maybe not the contrast and I can make this a bit bigger or smaller. I kind of really like that. And uh, voila, I, I wanna make another one here so I can click and drag and just make another one. 
so that I'm closing the photo so that we are more into the photo. And uh, voila. Now the next one is that I really like, it's called the right old circle. So I can make, there's a little help here. I can make, for example, a little gradient here on the panorama. On this one, I want to boost the exposure. So it's going to be like a little lamp here. See, it's a little lamp that I have. So let's say here, I want to go here, make it bigger. And I want to add back some of that warmth that I thought that was there. So let's see if I can add a bit more yellow. Yes, just a little tiny bit. Let's make this a little bigger. One other one tool that I really like is the brush. I'm going to click here, click on, on the brush. And same thing here. So the brush it has a whole bunch of options. I'm just going to double click on the different options to bring down to zero. I'm just going to boost the exposure. And I want to brush here maybe, oops, boost the exposure. Just make the, the building slightly bigger here. Maybe add a bit of clarity at the same time. So I'm brushing clarity and exposure in one stroke for the same price. It's crazy. Now, let's say you want to see the before and after. Remember the good old backslash key before and after. Before and after. Pretty amazing. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. So I can click here to go out of the panorama mode. And now let's do an HDR. HDR is amazing. It's you take basically three photos. That's what I do. A normal exposure like this one, an underexposure to get more details from the sky and an overexposure to get like more details from uh, the roof and, and the stone and everything. I'm going to select all three, right click, photo merge and go to HDR merge. All right. So here's the preview of the HDR and make sure auto align is on because, you know, sometimes you can move between one photo to the next. I never use the auto settings. I like to do it myself. So that's all there is. I mean, deghosting amount is that if you have things which were really moving like leaf and, and things that are water, which is not the case in this photo. Otherwise you can just uh, move it to the right if you want. But in this case, I'm not. And all I'm going to do is click on merge. All right. So now you see it's back here and uh, it has a little number four. Same idea than the, than the uh, panorama. We see all the different exposure and the one with a little histogram on looks like a cloud is the HDO one. So now I'm on this one, I'm going to bring down the highlights because I want to get by the clouds, which would only be possible because it's an HDR. I want to open up the shadows. I want to crush the blacks. I want to crush the whites. I want to boost the vibrance. It was, a, it was a really nice sunset that day. Maybe add a bit of saturation. Saturation is going to take all the colors and make them all vivid at the same time. And Vibrance is going to try to analyze the one that needs more saturation. Basically, it's saturation with a brain. So, okay, that's kind of cool. I really want this to be a nice sunset because it was. All right. And you can see here uh, we have the color mixer. I can basically um, take different colors and change the hue and saturation. So, for example, let's take the blue here. I can take the blue that's here and I can change the blue. So it's going to change the color. You would be changing the color of my sky. Saturation would be adding more saturation in my sky and luminance, more brightness or darkness. You know, you have to understand that the color can be more or less vivid or more or less bright. It's two different things. So luminance is brightness and saturation is vividness. Okay. Uh, so on this one, maybe I want to take the yellows. Let's play the U a little bit. Yeah. I want to go a little more orange, maybe add a more saturation on the yellows. I really want to make that clouds, uh, go maybe take my yellow same thing check it out i just move them around left right okay left is going more toward the reds maybe a little more saturation on the reds okay i'm liking this and now this one i want to do a very specific crop i'm going to rotate it if you put your mouse uh, outside of this square i can crop it i can rotate it i mean and i'm going to crop it here crop it there i want to do like a frame in a frame effect voila i like that then I'm going to go back on my global settings here. And I think I want to want to add more contrast to this photo just to make it pop even more. Something like this. And backslash key is going to give me the before and that's the after. And that was done with an HDR. I really kind of like that. Maybe I went a little overboard on uh, on saturation or my blues are too strong. So, you know, that's the good thing about Lightroom. It's non-destructive. So I can go back in my blue and take out the saturation that I added. Okay, you can also individually change colors. You see here, there's a little tool called the target tool. Uh, so I can go, for example, for saturation and I take that tool and then I can go right or left and that's going to make more or less saturation. Or I can go to uh, luminance 
and I can click here and I can make my sky brighter or darker. You get the idea. So you can either go by colors. I like to work more with the use saturation luminance, especially on saturation so I can see right away. I can see that my blues are more saturated, my yellows are more saturated. Then I'm gonna put my red a little more saturated, my orange a little more because it's a bit of a sunset. So it's just different way of uh, you know showing the different information. Okay, well, I'm happy with what I did. So now all these photos are retouched and ready to be posted on social media. So I'm gonna click Shift Select, right click, and I'm going to go to Save To. That's the way to do it. Save To and you have different options here. So I'm gonna put them, for example, where they are already in my export JPEG folder. And I can go, you have, you can go small size, full size, or custom. If you do social media, there's something that, because a lot of people have like screens which are about 2,500 pixels large, I like to, when I export for social media now, to put 2,500 pixels as the long side of your photo. And you click on save, and you have exported your first retouching from Lightroom. Lightroom CC is very easy to use. The good thing is once you know how to use it on desktop, you know how to use it on a mobile, on an iPad, and even online. And I think the future of Lightroom is gonna be Lightroom Classic going away and Lightroom CC coming up. I have some information about this that I cannot reveal, but in the next years, you know, they have to solve this folder structure issue for professionals like me. But if you're just starting into photography, or you have a nut, an old computer, Lightroom CC is so much faster than Lightroom Classic. Also, if you wanna learn Photoshop, check out this video I did a while ago that's gonna teach you a lot of Photoshop in a very few minutes.